so we have Benjamin again, and he's going to uh, just give a little talk about how to debug a broken input device. OK. Uh, thank you. So yeah, second talk. Uh, we've got one more talk after that for the input, and then you will be uh, uh, free from, from us. Uh, just small, uh, because a lot of people don't know who I am. Um, you can find me on Bentis, on Freenode, on GitNap, um, benjamin.tis4 at Gmail, or that. Um, I'm mostly working on kernel input drivers. Uh, I'm the author of quite a bunch now, uh, multi-touch, high to see heed. Uh, worked a lot with Logitech and uh, work on the world. So yeah, so that's me, in case you have a problem. And uh, this talk is mainly because most of the people don't know, which is fair, I mean, how to report a problem with the input side. And this is an example that we fixed, so that's why I put it here. Basically, they just say, OK, my touchpad doesn't work. And for this, once you've got that, the only answer we can say is, uh, yeah, doesn't work. So can we do something better? Hopefully, yes. Um, this is roughly what happens when the user, uh, which has always to be in the cloud, um, uses his input device. So you've got the input device, transport layer, which is basically the cable from or the internal cable. You've got the kernel, of course. Uh, you've got a scene wrapper, which is called libvdev, uh, that Peter wrote uh, quite a long time ago, something like two years. Uh, then you've got most of the time libinput. Uh, libinput talks, if you under X to the XORG input driver, um, which then in turn talks to the X server. Uh, and then you've got the toolkit. And basically, each element in these uh, layers uh, can be broken, and we need to figure out which part is broken and which one we have to fix. We have three main problems in the input layers. Uh, the first one is the user. We cannot fix it. The second one is the kernel. We have a lot of bugs for that. And the other one is libinput. If you're using older input drivers, you might have other interesting things there. But most, most of the time, we now have only bugs on libinput and in the kernel. So what we use. Um, basically, the first thing that we will ask you to send us is an FMU record, because it's a tool which is just between the kernel and the input, which are the two main points that we want to actually know which one is failing. So uh, the tool is called FMU. It has a very nice free desktop um, website, if it works, yeah. Um, we have an interesting part here is that how to submit useful memory recordings. Uh, I encourage you to go to that after that. After Ooh, that's bad. There we go. Uh, so as I said, AVMU is a, talk which is a tool which shows the output of the kernel. Um, as seen by libinput or any other uh, element. Uh, the interesting part is that we can replay the events. So you do a recording, you send it to us, we replay it on our laptops, and we can emulate it through libinput and fix uh, the problem. And then we just send back the fix and say, the user generally say, yeah, it works. And the command that you have to type is sudo evmu record. So just to give you an example of that, um, if you just type evmu record, it gives you a list of the current device. You take whichever you want. Uh, let's take my touch screen. It shows blah, 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 blah. I'm going at the beginning of the file. It gives you the version. We have now added the DMI version of the current laptop, so we know which laptop it was attached to. We've got a human description of the device. Um, basically, all of the capabilities of the device. Then you've got something which allows us to replay it. 
And then whenever you touch your touch screen or whatever, you got all of the events passed uh, by the tool and that we can then replay. So it's quite a nice tool to use, I mean, to debug. So yeah, so basically once you are here, if you have noticed that the kernel is doing okay most of the time, you talk to Peter. Of course we have other tools uh, because like I show you on the touch screen, just having random uh, lines of code, uh, it's not very convenient. So we wrote a bunch of them. I'm gonna just show you a, a quick one, which is empty jack cute. Oops. Um, yeah, so basically it shows just, we process at the same level uh, we process at the same level that EVMU. It's just that we have a fancy API, a fancy uh, GUI for it. Um, so this is the tool I use mostly for kernel debugging. Um, Peter is using another one which is called MTView because in lib input we don't check the exact same bits that we want to see in the kernel. Uh, where was I? So let's say empty jackcut or empty view or whatever tool you use, if you shows that the kernel is working correctly. Uh, you can also plug a different tool right after libinput, which is called libinput debug event that we now ship since two releases, I guess, in libinput. This tool is basically the same that you can have uh, debug events for EVMU shows the list of the device currently there and whenever you move you, you move whatever device input device you have you see the scrolling pointer axis and everything so if there is a problem there then that means that there is a problem in the input and we can check without having to use the old um, Wayland or XAPI If the kernel fails, uh, that's slightly more complex um, because most of the time the problem we have either the problem within the, the kernel or before, like the user or the input device or the transport layer. So sometimes the device just doesn't work and we have to figure out a way to fix that in the kernel. Uh, we also have some room for interpretation. I mean, the protocol is fairly uh, restricted, but we always end up in endless discussion with uh, Peter and the other input maintainers. Like, okay, well, if you have this situation that you should have this type of events and while well, we do not agree. And most of the time uh, you've got bugs in the drivers. Um, just because the hardware maker makes new device and they like to change the protocol without noticing us and then we, we are kind of screwed. So as a quick example, it kind of works. Um, it, it's not always evident to uh, understand the bugs and to see them. So this is one example of one bug which triggered two or three other bugs after that. Um, basically, at this time of the kernel, which was around 319, I guess, if you put one, two, three finger on your touchpad, then you release one finger. We had a spurious button touch event, which in lib input was detected as we have released all of the fingers. So what ended up is that you were doing a gesture and then you release it and with the kinetic spreading and whatsoever, we got everything messed up. So we had to fix that in the kernel. And it was really messy to fix. So to detect which part we have to, to fix, um, we have to first know what's going on 
down below. You've got a lot of physical layers. Uh, this can be USB, quite used quite a lot. PS2 also is used a lot for keyboards mostly. Uh, internal touchpads uh, are using PS2. Uh, Liud will tell you a little bit more about that later. Uh, you've got also I2C, which is quite new. Uh, it came mostly with the phones are using I2C uh, for their interface, uh, for the touchscreens. But now with Windows 8, we've got uh, heat of I2C. SMBus also can be used. Bluetooth, serial, well, whatever you can think of, basically somebody made it. Then on top of the physical layer, you've got a protocol. And we've got mostly three types of protocol. Either they are public, semi-public, or proprietary. When they are public, we are in good luck. Uh, so the examples are HID, uh, Human Interface Device, which has been popularized by the USB mouse uh, when they came in the late 90s. Uh, PS Moose was the previous protocol. Um, it's it's okay to work with that. Uh, you've got some semi-public uh, protocols. Uh, Synaptics is using RMI4. Logitech is using E++2. I call them semi-public because we have the documentation for them. But it's only used by one uh, hardware maker. And then you've got the, a good variety of proprietary protocol and where we have to reverse engineer the protocol or from time to time, we have the documentation, but most of the time under NDA, so we can publish it. Um, or we have to ask the hardware maker to fix the bug for us, which is kind of annoying. And of course, uh, the hardware maker likes to be creative and they can do some combination. So this is a combination from Synaptics. They like to do RMI4 over HID over I2C. Why not? Um, if you have a T440, uh, I mean the 40 generations of the ThinkPads uh, recently, you can use now a driver which is using for the TrackStick PS2 over RMI4 over SNBus. It's still not upstream, we're working on it. It should solve a lot of problems that we have in uh, the ThinkPad laptops, but it, no, we have a lot of problems. Uh, Logitech can be also quite creative. Um, Heat++ is the protocol that the Logitech mice are talking. It's a protocol which is used over HID, but if you're using a unifying mouse, which is wireless, uh, they internally talk with a receiver to DJ, which in turn is talking over HID, over USB, to the host. Yeah. And Peter had me one late that I won't explain. Um, so the question that we mostly ask people is which bus on which protocol you use. And basically what we are interested in is just the D-Mesh. We've got everything we need in it. And if we just grab into for input, we know that as soon as the input device is created, we know which bus it is using and which type of protocol it's using, basically. So this is an example of the Logitech MX Master. It shows that at the input level, we've got the CCFS pass, which says, hey, it's a USB device. We know it works. And if you're lucky, also, it can be a heat device, because there is this heat row nodes, which are created, or Logitech heat PP device. And this is much, much, much better. Because when it's heat, we have a tool uh, that I wrote three, two years ago, uh, maybe a little bit more, three years ago, which is called Heat Replay, which is based on one kernel module that David Herman wrote, which is called UHEAT. Um, it's a tool which shows the output of the device before the kernel processes it. So it's the exact same of ABMU, except that it's for HID, HID. So it's given that HID works on USB, I2C, Bluetooth, Bluetooth low emission, you can basically use that to reproduce any HID problem that we have 
without having the hardware. So if, uh, if somebody send us a heat recording, uh, we can just replay it on our laptop, fix the bug, send the bug back, send the patch back to the user, says, okay, it's good, and then we can just commit it, which helps us quite a lot. So just to show you, basically it's the same as everyone else. You just run heat recorder, it shows you, hey, you've got two mouse, it comes and you've got the events. The tool is, um, it's an auto-descriptive tool, uh, protocol, sorry. So I've got a script uh, written in Python, which parses the report descriptor, so we can understand how the mouse, the mouse presents itself. And as soon as you get events, we can parse the events also at the same time. So this is just the same event that I showed you before, except that now it's parsed, so we know that, hey, there is a problem in the parsing of the feed report descriptor for this device. Um, most of the time, if the kernel is not doing okay, uh, you can blame me. Uh, I've worked enough in the heat layer <laughs> to be one of the most contributor. Uh, yeah, so. If your tool is not hid, if your device is not hid, you've got a tool which, uh, if it's USB, sorry. Um, you can have USB mon, which shows the output of the raw USB events. Uh, it's quite useful. Um, though we cannot replay it. I mean, I haven't tried and I won't try. Uh, you just run uh, this and you've got also the list of the events. I won't show it because it's like redundant with what I just showed you previously, but. Uh, if you've got a PS2 device, so 99% of the laptops right now are using PS2, and we have a bug, uh, thanks to Liud over there, you've got a new tool which is called PS2 EMU, which is surprisingly the exact same that EVMU, Heat Recorder, <coughs> but for PS2. So it shows the output of the device before the kernel tweets there. Okay. It can be replayed, and you can run PS2 EMU record to just show it send us the logs, we will produce it, and so on and so forth. If you have any other transport layer, we'll have to either write the tool for it or hack in the kernel because it's not very easy. We don't have the easiest tool to solve here. So to wrap up, um, when we show this tool, most of the time the questions are, hey, do you guys do regression tests? And it's kind of yes and no. <laughs> For libinput, input, yes, definitely we do some regression tests. Um, it's easy, we've got the EVMU recorder, we just forge some very simple uh, sequence and we replay them and we make sure that the tool, the lib input answers the right thing that it is supposed to do. So whenever we do a change in lib input, the regression test suite is run, and we should not break any specific use case now. Uh, if you're running X without lib input, uh, we used to have a tool which is called XIT. Um, Peter, last year in his talk, if you were here, explained why it was such a problem. Uh, mostly because each, for each test, you have to run a new X server. And so when you want to run two, three or four at the same time in parallel, then it starts getting messy and you end up, it's not very efficient. For the kernel, we've got some regression tests, sort of. Uh, I got a basic uh, wrapper for the test. Uh, I've got a database of the device. I used to run it a lot. I'm not running it that much anymore because, yeah time plus doesn't find anything fancy you now. And for the EPS2, then you just have to ask Liud. Um, so this is the final slide. Um, how to report an input bug. Please provide a full image, not just an excerpt, because what we interest, if you 
send the full dimesh. We know which laptop you're using. We know which subsystem is using, and so on and so forth. Um, we will ask you to provide an FMU record for the reason I explained before, because we want to know which port is faulty. And then once we have this, we might have had to ask for a lot of different recordings, so it's OK. Uh, sometimes we get some people getting angry because we just ask a lot of logs, and they say, hey, but no, it's OK. So thank you for your attention. Just I saw that this one was perfectly my talk. <laughs> I know if you have some uh, questions. I think I killed everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Okay.